Good afternoon and welcome to everyone here in our audience today. We are the NASA CEAS 2022 Moon Exploration and Habitation Team, and we are proud to present to you DELOS, our design for a manned lunar base dedicated to scientific research and exploration. Hi, my name is Blake Brown, and I'm a rising junior from Fort Worth, Texas. Hi, my name is Eric Fabian Cardenas, and I'm from Bronzo, Texas. Hi, I'm Taylor Gomez. I'm from Spindora, Texas, and I will be a senior. Hello, my name is Zyra Zaka, and I'm a rising senior from Medford, Oregon. Hello, I'm Kylan Williams, and I'm a rising senior from Luz, Florida. The name Delos is derived from ancient Greek mythology. The word itself means something that can be seen, and it is the name of the wandering island that was the birthplace of immortal twins Apollo and Artemis. In our mission, DELOS is an acronym for the development and exploration of a lunar operations system. Decades of scientific research done by Apollo and the upcoming Artemis missions have trailblazed a path to support DELOS. Without the innovative work done by the people behind these missions, DELOS and future missions beyond the moon would not be possible. The objectives of the DELOS lunar base will be broken into several parts. The first step will be landing the prerequisite modules on the moon. Secondly, the first astronauts will move and connect the portable base structures into the lunar base. After constructing the base, the primary mission will be prepping the laboratory for sustainable human presence and preparing the life support systems. After this, the main objective of the base will be to, con to conduct vital research and explore the surface of the moon. Finally, the work done on the lunar surface will help prepare and propel humanity to prepare for a manned mission to Mars. The mission sits on the foundation that the Artemis mission and all of its components such as the SLS rocket, Orion capsule, and space funding are established. This mission will be conducted in three month long periods in a base with a volume size of three, 628 cubic meters with a required power supply of at least 20 kilowatts per day. So why humans? Robots are more resilient, more powerful and easier to control than humans. However, humans are adaptable and have a consciousness that AI cannot replicate. It is imperative that humans do what they have been doing since the beginning of time, learning and exploring, whether it be the Earth, Moon or Mars. Our research approach is really collaborative. First, we identified different problems we face on the lunar surface, and then we worked towards brainstorming ideas, researching the feasibility of those ideas, hitting to a final design, and then backtracking to overcome and improve. This is the Gantt chart illustrating our team's progress, as well as pictures of us and Dr. Lewis seeing actual Mars meteorites that illustrate some of the research behind our project. The quad chart gives a simplified overview of our project. To start with, our objective is to develop a sustainable scientific laboratory that can support a long-term human presence on the lunar surface. Having manned workspaces in close proximity to target samples will not only increase the quality of samples, but also the extent of potential lunar surface data that can be collected for future ISR use. In the top right-hand corner, we have a list from one of our brainstorming meetings, and a top view render of our finalized lunar base. The entire mission largely depends on the success of the Artemis mission. And after DELOS is established, we will also include a Mars Forward Test Facility that can be used to test technology for future Mars missions and beyond. Within this facility, we can test spacesuits designed for pressure in a Martian environment, among many other future technology that would be necessary to expand human space exploration. This is a site that we have chosen. This site was based off several parameters, including mean elevation and topography, illuminance, direct communication with Earth, conformation of water ice, and close proximity to permanently shadowed regions, which will be invaluable for geologic studies and purposes. This site chosen is a wide, flat space and is located 6.1 kilometers south of the Eben Baj Crater and 106.7 kilometers west of the rim of Shackleton Crater in the geographic south pole of the moon. Some of the upcoming science objectives for the Delos Lunar Base include geology, such as sample collection of volatiles and minerals from permanently shadowed regions. Um, and lunar materials, such as investigating the extraction and processing of raw lunar materials, as well as ISRU, such as utilizing the resources on the moon and forming usable products. Human research, exploring the human effects of partial gravity and extraterrestrial habitation, as well as radiation. Biology, further research and study into biological processes to sustain a human presence on the moon. And lastly, novel technology and architecture that will pioneer new and novel technologies to explore and thrive on the moon. This is a model of our base that I designed in the 3D modeling software Blender. You can see the two solid spherical modules, the Central Operations and Resource Environment, uh, or CORE, module, and the Excursion modules, and then the two inflatable modules, which are the Geology Lab and the Life Sciences Lab. Each is connected by accordion-like tubes so that the base is modular and, connected, and connecting the inflatable tubes is simple and straightforward. 
material chosen for the whole of the solid pressurized modules is 2219 aluminum alloy, chose for its tensile strength, thermal stability, and it being well tested on previous space missions. The outer layer of the base will be covered with a thermal blanket to affect solar radiation, followed by a layer of Kevlar to protect the base from ejected lunar dust and micrometeorites. After this will be the layers of aluminum and polyethylene, which will give structure to the base and provide some radiation shielding due to polyethylene's high hydrogen content. Finally, several redundant layers will help prevent pressure loss and leaks. These modules will be filled with a mixture of gases specifically tailored to meet the astronauts' needs. Maintaining the exact pressure and composition of these gases will be critical to the astronauts' mission and survival, and so protecting the interior space of the habitat from the outside will be of utmost importance. To support the astronauts via life support systems, we will be using technology and systems that have been well developed and tested in heritage space missions. Oxygen will be generated via electrolysis of water, which can be used to separate hydrogen for rocket fuel and oxygen for breathing. In addition, carbon dioxide scrubbers will prevent the continuous buildup of Build up of CO2 using regenerative absorbent beds. Finally, the base will need a trace contaminant control systems to monitor the buildup of over 200 trace gases, including methane, ammonia, and formaldehyde. One of the most crucial elements on board the base will be the water reclamation system. Water, being both an incredibly heavy and vital resource, will be recycled and recondensed whenever possible. In addition, small amounts of water will need to be continually replenished on board the base from Earth or extracted from lunar ice. During our research, we found it imperative to address radiation and micrometeorites because they are some of the biggest hazards that the crew will be facing on the lunar surface. Radiation can lead to degenerative diseases and mental health issues because the charged particles going through your brain waves can lead to extreme bouts of anxiety and depression, which would be very detrimental for a crew in an isolated environment. Even further, micrometeorites can lead to damage to the base. To combat this, we would ideally have a approximately 22 centimeter thick layer of polyethylene to combat the radiation. Although this wouldn't be feasible right off the bat, it is something to work towards to protect the crew. An additional protective layer of lunar regolith would be used as another portion of radiation shielding with its components of aluminum while also being a protective shell against micrometeorite impacts and protect the base rather than leaving it vulnerable. We will also have additional sensors that will be tracking the radiation exposure of the crew while also having other sensors to look at trajectories and see where micrometeorites might impact and harm the base. Here are the five main modules we'll be discussing in our base. The Central Operations and Resource Environment, or CORE, module, the excursion module, the geology lab, the bio bay, and support systems. Many of the essential support systems, such as oxygen generation, power, food storage, thermal controls, waste management, and other important systems vital to the crew's survival. The module will house the compressed oxygen and nitrogen canisters, as well as the crew's sleeping quarters and exercise area. The excursion module is the secondary, smaller, polyethylene dome that will act as the workshop area of the base, where the suit ports, human robot interface, tool shop, and access to the MMSEV will be housed. The geology lab will be inflatable. As we mentioned before, the Delos Lunar Base has two laboratories. This one is for geology, and there's another for life sciences. While it would be best to analyze all lunar regolith in Earth labs, only a small percentage of collected samples will be conveyable back to Earth via the human, human launch system. Because of this, much analysis on lunar regolith will need to be done on board the base. To do this, the base's geology laboratory is equipped with, surface sample, with a surface samples glove, glove box, a gaseous nitrogen connection, a sample preparation kit, a polarizing microscope, a scanning electron microscope, dual-use spectrometers and meters, and other various geological analysis tools. The geology lab will be inflatable. Our design builds on the design of Robert L. Howard Jr. and biology science on the ISS. Both laboratories will consist of a modular payload drawers where scientists can send self-contained experiments. The astronauts on base will simply set them up in the racks and monitor them as they run. The experiments will be delivered on resupply missions. The Life Sciences Laboratory module of Delos Base will include one human research payload rack and one non-human biological research payload rack. The research module will be for determining how human bodies adapt and change in harsh extraterrestrial environments. There are five main problems with the module we will be monitoring. Radiation, isolation and confinement, distance from Earth, gravity, and hostile and enclosed environments. 
It will also include cell culture, animal studies module, fruit fly study containers, a cryogenic drawer locker incubator, and a general workspace for general biology research. When in isolation, it is very plausible that astronauts will fall to bouts of anxiety, claustrophobia, and even depression. To combat this, we wanted our base to have a center around mental health and ensuring that our astronauts are taken care of. So we would like to suggest psychological evaluations along with appropriate medication since this is going to be a longer trip and we need to prepare for these different instances. Even further, part of those medications would include sedatives. And we also want to ensure that the communication system is able to support communications with an astronaut's family. The moon has one-sixth of the gravitational force compared to the Earth, and because of this, it has a major effect on the astronauts. The astronauts will lose approximately 1.5% of their bone mass per day, and to address this similar to that assess, the astronauts will need to work out immensely. A total of about 2.3 hours of exercise a day is needed to help keep their bones strong. Additionally, their diets also contribute greatly. Lots of calcium and vitamin D are needed to help keep their bones strong, commonly found in fish and mushrooms. A lack of sleep significantly and negatively impacts cognitive abilities, neurobehavioral function, and overall health. It also increases risks of accidents and incidents happening that can endanger the astronauts. Irregular workload demands and the loss of the 24-hour daylight cycle are two factors that could disrupt the circadian rhythm. Some additional elements that impact the quality of sleep astronauts may receive include microgravity and space motion sickness. In order to in order to combat this lack of sleep, lighting within the core module will be used to mimic the 24-hour daylight cycle. To power our base, we will use both kilopower reactors and solar power. The PIO system by NASA is a more efficient answer to solar cells on lunar surface. However, the sun will not always be facing our base, and so a secondary form of power is necessary. The kilopower reactor using studying technology, Krusty system, creates energy by the process of nuclear fission. Using a uranium-235 core, and a boron carbon control rod, when the two elements interact, they cause a nuclear reaction generating electricity. The power system can create up to 10 kilowatts per day, and a couple of them have the potential to power the entire base and our rovers. Moon deaths will likely be one of the greatest challenges for our aspiring astronauts and scientists that they will face on the moon. As became evident, even during the short Apollo missions, the microscopic lunar dust fragments have the potential to quickly clog seals, zippers, and movable parts. The complex nature of this lunar base, as well as extended extra vehicle activities and robotic missions, will make prime targets for lunar dust damage. Additionally, while there is little data on the toxicological effects of moon dust, the microscopic particles can easily pose a respiratory hazard to the astronauts. Some of the potential solutions include basic tools such as vacuum cleaners and brushes, as well as suits that never fully enter the habitat. However, the human researchers on the moon will have the opportunity to study and test novel technologies such as electrostatic repulsion systems to repel the charged dust directly woven into the spacesuits and fabric of the lunar base. The Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter has been orbiting the moon since 2009 and has been a very valuable resource for data about lunar terrain and temperatures. Because of LRO, we know that the moon can reach temperatures of up to 120 degrees Celsius and as low as negative 130 degrees Celsius. The active thermal control system will be used to control interior temperature by controlling the location and intensity of heat by pumping liquid ammonia through a system of plumbing throughout the base. Or, most geological analyses will need to be done on the base as opposed to on Earth. Here the astronauts will be looking for volatiles and water on the surface. To do it, the base will be equipped with a few main tools, a polarizing microscope for molecular analyses of samples, spectrometers to determine what a sample is via its light spectra, and a laser-induced breakdown spectroscopy tool. As part of the research investigations on the moon, humans will not only study biological processes in a unique environment, but will also pioneer new technology to be used on future missions to Mars. The researchers will use state-of-the-art biological instruments and advanced techniques such as genetic engineering and aeroponics to innovate and discover new solutions to sustaining life and growing food on other planets or celestial bodies. The study on the moon is processing lunar dust and other raw materials into usable forms. Electric or solar furnaces can heat the lunar dust to form glass or ceramics. Furthermore, the metal oxides comprising the majority of lunar dust can be converted directly into solid metal with oxygen as a byproduct, such as calcium, magnesium, aluminum, or titanium. Additionally, the moon may contain trace amounts of rare earth metals which can be harvested and shipped back to Earth. 
In situ, resource utilization are rovers and satellites that harness resources from the moon to use on the moon. The Viper, a volatile investigating polar exploration rover, is designed to discover frozen water deep in the moon's PSRs. It uses four main tools, a neutron spectrometer system to use to detect water, Trident, a drill designed to go through regolith and potential ice, and two spectrometer devices used to analyze collect samples. When on the moon, there is also a necessity for transportation. We decided to use the lunar terrain vehicle, particularly because of its autonomous driving, as well as its ability to have scientific payloads. We also want to use the SEV because it is designed to explore with minimal time needed outside of the rover, and it also has a robotic arm. We also wanted to use the athlete because it can support loading and lifting heavy vehicles. It can split into two parts. In, this is a segue into the triathlete and each wheel doubles as a limb for tools, which can be really useful in the versatility for everything that an astronaut needs. The new age of spaceflight is among us, and frankly, it's overdue. The moon, and eventually Mars, will be explored and researched by humans. It's only a matter of time. Artemis is a slight spark of hope into the vast future of space travel, and our base acts as a stepping stone into that future. Thank you to our project mentor, Dr. Ernest Lewis, for all of his help and support with designing our lunar base. We would also like to thank all those who gave their advice and help. Yeah. Especially like to thank Ms. Selena Miller and Ms. Margaret Baggio for all of the work that they do for the CEAS program, as well as NASA, everyone who helped out with the CEAS program, the Texas Space Grant Consortium, and the Center for Space Research. Now, we want to tell you a little bit about what the CEAS program meant for us. The CEAS internship was incredibly enriching. I most of all enjoyed the awesome team members and friends I met here. It was great. The CEAS program was truly an invaluable experience. It was amazing to meet like-minded individuals who are all passionate about STEM and excited to learn more. Throughout this program, I became more confident in my own abilities as well as the career that I want to continue to pursue. For me, CEAS was an incredible and eye-opening opportunity that gave me the chance to truly learn more about STEM. This CEAS experience has been astonishing. Over the past two weeks, I feel like I have learned so much and the resources and connections that I've made will last me a lifetime. Special thanks to everybody that has helped me along the way. I really liked the SEAS internship because it gave me the opportunity to work with people from across the nation that were passionate about STEM. I also enjoyed listening to the speakers and hearing about their experiences in their different fields. One of the challenges I faced was meeting a group of people I did not know on that first day and being expected to go straight to work. But this experience was very valuable because it taught me about communication, team building, and especially just working hard to break the ice with people you don't know. Thank, Thank you for the Moon Exploration Team! team.